from a monastery on top of the mountain cut from a piece of stone. Connecticut Muzzleloaders presents Sometimes there's nothing better than sitting in your backyard and plinking away with a 22. When I was a teenager, I'd love to sit in the back 40 and blast away at tin cans, twigs, or the occasional varmint unfortunate enough to come into range. Well, I haven't been a teenager in a long time, and the back 40 is now the back quarter, but it's still fun to come out here and plink away. Besides the time and distance, the other change is it's not anything like my old 22. Instead of using traditional cased ammunition, it dispenses with the case and just loads the basic components themselves. This is a single pellet of number 4 buckshot, which measures slightly larger than 22 caliber. The chamber of the rifle is designed to automatically swage it into a 22 caliber slug as it is fired. The propellant is a small charge of smokeless or other powder, added separately to the firing chamber behind the ball. Here, the charge is slightly over 1 grain. And it does one heck of a job. I like small caliber black powder arms and wanted to build a rifle in 22 caliber, but doing this as a muzzleloader presented too many problems, the issues of loading and fouling are just too great. A better approach was to use a breech loading design, and to make it even more interesting, I wanted to try a closed electrical ignition system which could take maximum advantage of the tiny powder charge. My first attempt resulted in this black powder rifle. It was fun to build and shoot, but having to use black powder had two disadvantages. First, it fouled after 20 or so shots and lost accuracy. Second, like all black powder arms, it had to be carefully cleaned even if only a single shot was fired. I wanted the new rifle to use smokeless powder, but designing one turned out to be a very long and complicated process with many twists and turns. Part 2 of this video shows how it was designed, built, and assembled. Now, let's take it all apart. Here are all the parts spread out. The barrel and stock are modified from those on a Ruger 1022, and the rest are custom built. Details of how they are built and assembled are shown on the rifle's own web page. Let's put a mark on this board and see what it will do. Hmm, not bad. 1.1 grains of powder gives a muzzle velocity of 1450 feet per second, which blows through this board like it wasn't even there. This load has permanently discouraged many local groundhogs. To ensure accurate powder delivery, I built a small powder dispenser whose throw volume can be easily changed. If you want some quiet backyard shooting, the insert can be changed to reduce the powder load to 0.7 grains, which lowers the muzzle velocity to about 950 feet per second. Now, the plank king sounds about as loud as a pellet rifle. It still has plenty of punch. The bottom hole was the higher power shot, but at lower power the shot still plows through the board. Now, we'll shoot a group of 10 shots into a target at 25 yards. Notice that the reloading doesn't take much longer than it would with a single shot 22 rifle. Okay, that's 10 shots. Let's take a look. Not bad. The dot on the side is as big as a group, except for the one slight outlier. If you're interested, the website has more accuracy data to look at. Now that we know how it shoots, let's go out on the back deck for some serious plinking. At less than 2 cents per shot, it's hard to find a less expensive way to have fun, and with the low velocity and poor ballistic efficiency of the round ball, the shot doesn't carry far. 
making it safe to shoot in more crowded areas. Just make sure you're taking the usual safety precautions and obeying all local gun laws. We have a nice selection of targets. A 1 inch swinger at 50 feet. Gong made from an old propane bottle at 30 yards. By now I call him Mr. Swiss Cheesy. A 3 inch metal target hung from a tree next to it. And rotating metal bird targets at 40 and 50 yards. The load doesn't always rotate the target, but it plinks nicely when you get it. That was fun. Well, it's about time to wrap things up and get on with my next project. So here we are again on a lovely fall afternoon, and what do we have? We have 500 rounds of ammunition, about $7. A rifle to shoot the ammunition, about nine prototypes, two years of computer-rated design and engineering, about $85,000. But a beautiful fall afternoon to shoot it, priceless.